So the iPhone has had USB-C for three months, but is it actually useful? When it first came out, I tested every USB accessory I could with this device, including physical keyboards, connecting it to my studio display, basically making an entire computer with USB-C hubs and ethernet all work with the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro. Now I'll be honest, over the last three months, my use cases haven't been that advanced, but I still think USB-C has made life a lot easier on the new iPhone. And there are a couple things I think Apple can do in the future that will make it even more useful to more people. One of the simple things, and it's just a quality of life improvement is being able to take the same cable that I use to charge my iPad mini or iPad Pro, plug it into my iPhone, and now that's charging, and then take the same cable and plug it into my MacBook Pro, same connector on all three devices. Charging, definitely streamlined. And the other standout feature has been recording ProRes video directly to an external SSD from the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. I do a lot of recording now away from the studio just with my iPhone not taking the big cameras because it really does look incredible. All these shots were done with the iPhone 15 Pro Max directly to an external SSD. Now I tried a lot of different external SSDs and USB-C hubs with SSDs built in, but frankly, one of the easiest and most reliable would be just using something like a Samsung T7. You see the little USB-C symbol down at the bottom, and I'm recording directly to this. But what I've actually used most often is my OWC Envoy Pro Mini. This looks like a normal flash drive, which typically wouldn't work if you're trying to record ProRes video, but this is not your normal flash drive. This is actually a high-powered SSD built into what looks like a flash drive, and if I connect this and go to record ProRes video, you'll see the same USB symbol pop up and this can record without dropping any frames for a long period of time. And this is the one terabyte version, which you'll see I can get almost two hours and I actually have files already on here. If I delete this flash drive completely, I'll get even more video storage. Recording ProRes video just like this to an external SSD has made it a ton easier. Then I can just take this out, plug it into my Mac Studio, import it to Final Cut and I'm ready to go. And when I do record a video and maybe I used my Rode Wireless Go 2, it's really convenient just to be able to plug this into my Mac, get the uncompressed WAV file directly off this device, then just take that same cable and I can plug it into here. And if I have any video files from my phone, I can get it that easily. And one other use case has actually been connecting a USB-C microphone like this to my iPhone and recording that way. Using the app Ferrite, it recognizes the USB-C mic and I can record right here, get a local uncompressed WAV file and even edit it on my iPhone. So I do think all of that makes it worth it. The ability to record ProRes video to external SSDs, external mics, and just the simplification of charging cables. But there are some things that has actually caused confusion for iPhone users and some features that are not in parity with the iPad when it comes to USB-C. For instance, take the iPad mini, which doesn't have Thunderbolt. So it's the same USB-C kind of connection on the iPhone 15. I can actually plug a USB-C webcam like this Opal Tadpole and my iPad will actually recognize it and then take this as the video input. Now I can use a nicer webcam with my iPad. But for whatever reason, if I do FaceTime on my iPhone 15 Pro Max and I plug in the same USB-C camera, it will not recognize it as a video input. No matter how long I wait or even if I use a powered USB-C hub, it's just not going to accept the webcam as a video input. Considering my iPad mini is over two years old and this iPhone 15 Pro Max is three months old, I would think this webcam could work with this device. And because you can use things like a USB-C hub and external microphones, you could use this to like do a video podcast, but it would be great if it could actually recognize a webcam just like the iPad. Also, when it comes to external SSDs, being able to format them from the Files app is a great feature. So if I go to Files, you'll see this is the external Samsung SSD, and I can actually erase it right here in the Files app. Then this formats it, and then I can use it with my iPhone. I can even rename the drive, create new folders, and copy files over. Now, a question I got often in my early USB-C videos is can I back up my photo library to an external drive with the iPhone? Or can I even back up my entire iPhone device like I would with a Mac to an external SSD? The answer to both of those questions is no. There's no way to back up your iPhone to an external SSD directly or have an easy way to copy photos. Now, if you did want to copy some photos to that external SSD, you could go to the Photos app, select multiple, hit the share button, and then here you'll see save to files. It'll pull up the file browser and I can choose that external SSD that I just formatted. You'll see it pretty quickly saved all those image files to the external SSD and here they all are backed up on the external SSD right from my iPhone. Now there's definitely no select all photos here on your iPhone, which understandably probably shouldn't do anything with your entire photo library quickly here in the photos app. And there's also no way to back up your iPhone to an external SSD. Now, of course, you have iCloud backup and that works fine, but it would be kind of nice when you have an external SSD to also hit backup and create the same kind of backup you do on your Mac. I understand when you connect your iPhone to your Mac, you have lots of options like restoring the iPhone, checking for software updates, backing it up, doing encrypted backup. But I feel like Apple could design this in the settings app, including things like a software update over the air that then proceeds a local backup to the SSD drive. But as of right now, 
you can't do that. Now there's still even more use cases like plugging in SD card reader, and then you can access the SD card files right here in the files app. This is really nice when I go drone shooting and I can just look at the files right here on my iPhone and back them up. You can also connect USB-C headphones directly to the iPhone, no adapter needed. Plus you can do external monitors and keyboards and all that wild stuff that I tested months ago. And while I hope Apple updates some of those things like webcam support and maybe even backing things up to an external SSD directly on device, I do think it's worth it. The ease of charging, being able to use USB microphones without adapters, and recording ProRes video to that external SSD has been huge for my personal workflow. And while I've enjoyed the USB-C transition overall, lightning still has to be part of my life. I sometimes record B-roll with an iPhone 14 and I need a lightning cable to transfer that footage. Of course, we still have the Turtle Magic Mouse that requires lightning to charge. And yes, the Magic Keyboard too. Even though we got an upgraded iMac, we got no USB-C peripherals for the Mac. But let me know down in the comments, maybe you have unique use cases for USB-C or you're one of those that just really misses lightning and wants it back. I'd love to hear about it. And if you'd like to see all the things you can attach to the iPhone, even things like ethernet and external displays, I have that video right up here. Or if you'd like to learn how to automate your iPhone using shortcuts, I have a Shortcuts 101 video, it's right up here. It teaches you how to build them step-by-step, step, walking you through the entire process. And before you go, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.